I'm David Andrade. I uh, run Theory Animation with a couple of people. We're a, a Blender house. We use Blender. We make an animated web series called Ray and Clovis. And uh, we make also production tools for people to work remotely uh, from all over the world. And today, uh, what I'd like to do is talk about our stuff that we talked about at SIGGRAPH. Um, I kind of want to do a recap on SIGGRAPH, but you know, some people couldn't go, so I want to just kind of like fill everybody in with what happened. Um, yeah, feel free to ask questions. I'm also on IRC, and I'm trying to watch the Twitter traffic, but it's, uh, it's a little much. So uh, with that, let me share my screen here. Awesome. OK, so World Blender Meetup Day, uh, that's what's happening now. For those of you who don't know, we had Australia and Austria present this morning, which is pretty awesome. Um, and we're, we're going on right now. Of course, we had Stanford going on for a little bit, introducing themselves. And then later tonight, we have Portland. So it's going to be a, uh, a pretty fun and Seattle. Filled, and Seattle, that's right. That's right. So it's going to be a pretty fun-filled day of uh, Blender. So I just kind of want to go over SIGGRAPH really quick. And it's just, I haven't really timed this out, but I just ask questions if you guys have any. Um, if you didn't go to SIGGRAPH, it was hosted in Vancouver this year. Uh, this is Vancouver. I took a shot of the city uh, just near the convention center. If you haven't been in Vancouver, it's beautiful this time of year. It's like a cool 65 degrees, super gorgeous, very high-tech kind of town. Uh, this is the view looking mm -hmm. out near the convention center. I mean. The, Really, really nice spot to, to host SIGGRAPH. Vancouver was also an Olympic city. So this giant torch for the Olympic torch is right next to the convention center. And it lit up at night. Uh, so it's actually really cool to see. And that's a convention center in the background, by the way. That giant building that you're seeing right now, that is the actual um, site of SIGGRAPH. And there, here's the other side of SIGGRAPH with the giant blue thing uh, off to the corner there. So. This is uh, SIGGRAPH, if nobody's ever been. Um, there, there's, if nobody's ever gone to SIGGRAPH, there's a lot of parties that go on. And this is one of the uh, uh, SIGGRAPH chapter parties that was held. And it's really fun to see a whole bunch of nerdy dudes and women try to dance. Uh, <laughs> it never happens. But it's still pretty cool. Um, it's actually one of the better parties this year. I'm very surprised. They, the shotgun party and the chapters parties uh, have always been the best. And, this was, if you ever go to SIGGRAPH, definitely hit the parties, because that's where you uh, end up meeting people. So some things about SIGGRAPH and what, what's going on with SIGGRAPH. Um, VR and 3D, like Oculus Rift, Morpheus, that stuff is really, really in. Uh, if last year's SIGGRAPH was about 3D printing, this one is definitely about VR and Oculus and Morpheus and putting people into, into spaces. So this is AMD. They had a, a pretty big area here. Um, nearby was Oculus, of course, and everybody doing their, their own versions of like an Oculus kind of hack. It was very cool to see. Uh, if you've never worn one, they kind of look like um, maybe PlayStation 2 kind of graphics. Uh, the, the only downside is the stuttering kind of gets to you after a while, uh, especially in the background or if you move really quickly. But it's a very, very cool thing. Like, it completely surrounds you. And in this case, these people, they had, like, these little um, red and green dots. And you could touch people as they're, like, playing music. It was kind of neat. Uh, I took a video of one person. This is the bird simulator at SIGGRAPH. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's happening right there. Um, it's, it's a very short video. So let me, like, play that again. On the top right, you can kind of see her flying through the city. Yeah, and there's a fan in front of her, so like the fan's blowing air at her to make her feel like a bird. So this is one of those Oculus hacks I was telling you about. Like as she moves, she she's controlling everything with her uh, hands there, so it's pretty nifty. All right, whatever. Um, this is another thing that was at SIGGRAPH. If, if anyone heard of Google I/O or, or watched Google I/O this summer, they unveiled cardboard, and cardboard is their version uh, of an Oculus Rift, and it's really kind of nifty. Uh, basically, you take your Nexus, and I think it works with iPhones, but you take your Google device, you slide it in there, just a regular smartphone. Um, there's two little lenses in there, and you, you, you assemble this little piece of cardboard, basically, and you got yourself a really nifty 3D device. And actually, it works really, really well. Uh, I, I was surprised at how well this thing works. If you ever if you have the chance to find one, some people are selling them on eBay. 
Um, I don't know where you can really get them, but they were handing them out left and right at SIGGRAPH. Super cool little system. Um, you can watch a bunch of YouTube videos with this, or you can just watch like 3D videos on YouTube, or you can just, they have some pre-made apps and everything. Uh, and it works just by having two, um, two like little images next to each other, but you can't see them, so your eyes have that whole parallax thing going. Um, but still, very, very, very pretty cool. If you've never been a SIGGRAPH, then you don't know about teacups. Uh, these are RenderMan teacups. People wait in line for hours to get these damn things. <laughs> this is 20 years of, of teacups. Uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of them. And of course, I, I didn't wait in line this year. It's, uh, it costs too much money to go over and then just wait in line two hours for a teacup. But these dumb things, they'll sell for like $100 on eBay. And my buddy got one. Um, Kind of like the Triforce kind of thing going. It was a golden, golden teacup this year. I didn't get a decent photo of the Blender booth, and and this drives me nuts. Of like all the places I'd gone and hung out at the Blender booth for almost half the day, I didn't get a decent photo of it. Um, but this is the Blender booth. Uh, they were put in the far back corner this year. Kind of a shame because last year they had a really nice spot right as soon as you walked into the right. Uh, this year they put them in the back corner, but it was. Still really cool. Big screens, tons of uh, tons of people showing off stuff. Uh, there's Mike Pan over there on the left with the uh, the orange orange shirt. Um, they had two really cool shirts too. Uh, they were Eat, Sleep, Blend, Repeat, and <laughs> they had it in blue and pink. And I definitely picked up both. Uh, super super cool. Um, a lot of people stopped by though. There there was a lot of people showing off stuff and asking questions, and it's always great to see the kind of outreach that they have. Now, this is the actual Blender conference. Um, and someone correct me or stop me if, if this has already been shared. Um, but this is what Tom presented. So I don't know if he updated or uploaded his presentation. Does anybody know? Or I haven't seen it, but uh, I'm, yeah. I OK. Haven't, I have not seen it. All right. Um, well, I, I'll just run through it really quick. I don't have all of the slides from Tom, but I have a few of them. Um, Ta every year at SIGGRAPH, Tan hosts the uh, like a Blender day, if you will. Um, it's an artist showcase and an overview of Blender. Uh, and this year was no different. And it's really fun. Uh, if you ever can, go to it. Uh, the, they ask everybody to introduce themselves, say where they're from. Uh, and I've been going to these for a few years now. And I've noticed a trend of more and more studios, uh, people coming from visual effects places coming. And this was no exception. There were a lot of people from the local studios up in uh, Vancouver, which we all know like pretty much everybody's in Vancouver at this point. Um, he has a little definition of what Blender is, what is your goal. There's been a lot of questions of like, what is Blender? Like, is, is it a rival to Maya? Is, is it this or that? Uh, but he, this was like his opening slide and uh, it, I think it sets the tone pretty, pretty well. Um, this is also interesting going along with what I said earlier about Blender having a, a lot of industry presence. Valve has been a big help for Blender uh, with their Steam Workshop making hats, their SDK that now really supports Blender. And if, I think like purchases can now benefit Blender directly, which is pretty awesome. Epic Games has also been helping them out quite a bit. And then there was that Epic Lunch last year where a whole bunch of companies and Ton sat together. So it looks like there's a, there's a lot of positive sponsorship and development for Blender coming, going forward. And of course, we just talked about Alembic, and that's that's on there. Uh, so you all know about Open Subdiv and everything else. All of this stuff is coming towards Blender. And like I said, there's been a lot of industry presence and a lot of industry support behind Blender in the past couple of years. So this is a really nice slide to see. Now, I might have misunderstood him. Um, someone just sent me in a message that I guess the presentation is online from SIGGRAPH. So I, I could be getting this wrong, but. Blender has been around for uh, almost 20 years at this point. So it's either this year or the next year is going to be like the 20 year anniversary. Uh, I think what it is is that it started development in 1994. And of course, you know, being 2014, it's, it's been about 20 years. So it's kind of a nice thing to see, um, to see the progression. So I imagine in Los Angeles, SIGGRAPH next year, there will there'll definitely be kind of a celebration for the 20 years of Blender. But there you go, uh, the, from the beginning in 1995 to the current release uh, where it's at. 
Now, you went over some of this already, um, Sterling, just kind of like the overview, what's coming, what's going on, what's being worked on. Uh, these are all the developers that they hire, the Google Summer of Code stuff, uh, all of this stuff. You, you've kind of touched on most of it already, but that's what they're working on, so it's pretty awesome. Viewport, OpenGL upgrades, dependency graph. Uh, here at Theory, we animate some pretty heavy scenes, so it's awesome to see that dependency graph is getting some love. And then the anything that's not possible now, that, that spawned a bit of a discussion, and people were talking amongst themselves. They, if I remember correctly, Tom was asking people what they wanted in Blender. But I, I didn't really have much sleep at that point because I had just gotten off the plane. So I'm not really sure what he said 3.0 <laughs> is going to be. But it's going to be something amazing, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, this is a, a very cool thing. And um, Francisco and the whole gang are working on Blender Cloud. And you mentioned, um, what was the name uh, of their, their thing? It started with an R, their like, open source pipeline, whatever. Red uh, Grant. Yes, thank you. Um, that is that's that's like the way they're going forward. Um, and they had a high level post, and they talked a little bit about it too uh, during this conference. But it looks like everything was in the planning stages, and some decisions have been made. So uh, I'm I'm very excited to see what comes about it in the next few months. This is the coming soon, you know, coming next year kind of stuff. Um, Big OpenGL upgrade. They talked about that quite a bit, and, and dependency graph. There's a lot of talk about getting uh, animation going really well, and just you know having multiple characters in a scene is still a little bit of a pain, but it's it's getting so much better. Um, Non-photorealistic shaders. You talked a little bit about like getting freestyle into cycles. All that kind of stuff is coming, uh, but they kept hinting at asset management via the cloud. So that's the stuff that's really exciting to me. And then a little highlight of this, you mentioned Blender Market, um, the, the CG cookie side of things. Uh, there's a few others, uh, Blender Support, Blender for Web. And the one that, that makes me really happy is the features that are in production that are using Blender. These are all Blender made, uh, animated, rendered feature films, which is really, really cool uh, to see it coming like it's actually films are being made with Blender and releasing and coming out and playing you know, at festivals. So uh, Kiribati is the one I have more connection with. That's being rigged by Juan Pablo Buza. I'm going to butcher yeah. that name. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> awesome dude. He does all the rigging for Ray and Clovis as well. So he's, uh, he's awesome. Uh, and then, of course, 95 and Baldi are also feature films that are being made by all in Blender. So super, super cool to see that. Uh, what is it like to be at the Blender Showcase? Well, this is me. Uh, I took a photo while people were watching the new Ray and Clovis. It's, it's really fun, everybody. Everybody's just like staring and kind of like some people are like uh, blown away, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is really, really cool. It, it's always packed. There's always a bunch of people in here, standing room only sometimes. Uh, and just I want to give you guys a, an idea of what it's like to, to see it from actually being there. So that's kind of overall SIGGRAPH kind of stuff. Um, the, the biggest thing, like I said, is 3D. Um, yes, 3D printing is still a thing, right? Um, but it's, it feel, I feel like that's really matured. Uh, I'll go back one. But what's really taking off right now is virtual reality and 3D goggles and the 3D like immersive stuff. Not the 3D like stereoscopic stuff. Um, there's a lot of sessions on like Oculus Rift kind of stuff. And it, you know, it's kind of a direction that the industry is going in. And of course, seeing Google with having a stereo or not stereoscopic, but having like a full 3D thing on their phone um, with cardboard, that's super, super cool. So before I go any further, does anyone have any questions on SIGGRAPH or SIGGRAPH stuff or anything SIGGRAPH related? Uh, what is the next SIGGRAPH going to be? So they announced all of them for a couple of years, or actually almost four years now. Um, the next one is Los Angeles. That's 2015. Then Anaheim in 2016. And if I remember correctly, it's back to Los Angeles in 2017 and then Vancouver. So I remember people saying it was going to be about four years before it came back to Vancouver. So I believe it's LA, Anaheim, LA again, and then uh, Vancouver. And if anyone's been to An the Anaheim SIGGRAPH, that's the best, because everything's just like in one little spot. You don't have to walk and fear getting shot or anything like that. 
not judging. <laughs> Any other questions about SIGGRAPH? No? Okay. Um, hey, hey, yeah? Uh, yes, sir. So I just was told to, I think Lee's in our, uh, in our Zoom conference. Okay. Uh, he was going to do a, a freestyle thing. So, I, you know, obviously, I don't know how long you'd plan to present, but it'd be awesome if we could leave maybe a little bit of time at the end of before 2 p.m. for Lee to do a quick. Oh, yeah. So let's see. It's um, it's 1.30 right now, right? So, no, I, I think I can get the, the next little bit here done in 15 minutes, if that's all right. Okay. Sounds, sounds good. And we'll just checkpoint with Lee at the end of your talk and make sure he's good to go. Okay. Sounds cool. good. Thanks. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what we presented at SIGGRAPH. Um, here at Theory, we're all about working remotely. Uh, I'm just going to, well, I, I, I guess that slides in a little bit. Um, we're all about working remotely and empowering people to work remotely. So one of our flagship shows is Rain Clovis. Um, and I wanted to find a way to bring people together to also talk about working remotely. And there's a lot of companies out there that are working remotely. So we held this birds of a feather on working remotely. So I, we invited some for good friends. Uh, we had CG Cookie that came by, um, Wes, and he talked a little bit about their company. Uh, I'm sure we all know who CG Cookie is. They, they do not make cookies. Uh, they make really amazing tutorials, and they just recently added sculpting. And I'm just going to go through Wes's slide set really quick and, and just kind of show you some of the stuff that they talked about. Um, they're a super cool company. They have six full-time people, 12 people working remotely, and then 40 more people who contribute. Uh, and like I said, they're fully remote. I, they have West in Chicago, Jonathan's in Kansas City, and there's a whole bunch of other people working around. Um, and it was awesome because we wanted to know like, from other companies, how do you work remotely? Like, What are some of the challenges? What are some of the things that you do? How do you sync together? Uh, and they gave us an open insight into how they do things. Slack. If no one's ever used Slack, if you if you have a team that's working remotely, um, Facebook chat kind of works, but Slack is the best. It, it it's a really easy way to kind of like sort chats within your team, and it's private, of course. Um, but to sort talking between your team remotely, it's a little bit like IRC, maybe a little bit like Twitter, um, but a really really handy tool. Another thing that CG Cookie does is use Basecamp for all of their managing. Uh, if no one's ever used Basecamp, it's not like a shotgun, but it's more kind of like an overall project kind of thing, but similar in, in uh, task and everything and assigning people and discussion. And of course, the, the typical stuff, Google Hangouts and Dropbox for um, sharing and talking to people and, and doing meetings and everything. But uh, a little bit more about their, their team and, and working remotely. And I know I'm going to butcher all of this, so if Wes is watching this, I'm so sorry. I just kind of want to like go over his bit of the presentation. Um, Everybody thinks when you work remotely that it's it's there because you can save a bunch of money and and that's really it. You know, you, you just give people tasks and you forget about it, and that's not really what it's about. Uh, it's about kind of a team effort and empowering people to work anywhere in the world, and, and that's like our mission too at Theory Animation. Like, how do we empower people to work all over the world? Uh, and Wes had a really big point about like loving your team and giving them the space and trusting them because it's a creative enterprise. That's what we do. So you, you never know like how long it's going to take. Uh, sometimes you need to turn off technology and go away. Um, sometimes you'll work too much. Uh, if anybody here has done freelancing, you know, like if you get a project and you got a deadline, you're going to be doing like 18 to 20 hour days to get it done. And that's not healthy. It's not healthy for anybody. Um, and when you're working remotely and you don't have anything to distract you, that's really not healthy because then you're, you're just going to completely burn yourself out. So, I, I really appreciated this part of, of Wes's talk from CG Cookie of how they encourage people to like take breaks as much as they need to get right back into it. Um, and another thing, if anybody out there on YouTube or on Zoom or, or people watching this in the future, um, if you want to run a remote team and you want to keep them together for a long period of time, definitely meet together face to face. Definitely come together, talk to each other, and try to have some kind of like cohesion with your team because again, it's not like just taking art or task or whatever and just throwing them out into, you know, the, the, the team, you, you actually have to have a back and forth communication. So, uh, this is something that we've also discovered at theory animation. Like it's good to bring people together and just talk it out and, and just kind of interact that way. Because if not, if you just push task out there, people get burned out and, and eventually people quit. So it's not a healthy thing. Uh, it, West, 
picked out some books that are really handy. If you guys are, if anybody here is interested in working remotely or like how does it work or how do I bring this to my company or whatever, these are two really good resources. Uh, 37 Signals wrote a really good book called Remote and you, you can get it right there. They also make the application Basecamp. So they, they're all about like empowering people working remotely around the world. Uh, and then We Work Remotely is kind of like freelancer or Odesk, but for people who work remotely, like who are used to, you know, go-getters getting stuff done. And, and if anybody here is a freelancer or is interested in that, I, I recommend you write that website down. It's a really great resource um, for working remotely, finding other workers, et cetera. It's, it's a really nice community. So this is like a very, very slimmed down version of Wes's presentation. Um, I will try to upload some more of it later on during the week. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, Wes is really, really approachable. This is some photos, by the way, of their team. Like I said, they have some people in Chicago, they have people in Kansas City, uh, and then throughout North America, and then all their instructors worldwide. So it's a, it's a really awesome group. Um, but this is Wes. If anyone has any questions about CG Cookie or working remotely or anything, they're, they're super approachable. Just send them a tweet or send them a quick email, and they'll say hello. OK, uh, I think I got enough time to do one more, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. OK. So this is our part of the presentation. Um, and there were four people that presented at our Birds of a Feather on working remotely. Um, the last two I'll just touch on, but this is our, our portion of the presentation, how we, we do stuff. Um, at Theory, we're a bunch of artists that work without borders. You know, kind of like Doctors Without Borders, we're Artists Without Borders. Uh, I, we want to find a way to empower people all, all over the world. And we have a pretty diverse group of people right now. Um, most of these artists volunteer their time. They love that you know they love Rain Clovis. They want to help out and and make a really great show, and it's it's awesome. So here's just a little map that we made during SIGGRAPH of like where does everybody live, and uh, we we don't have any in in Asia yet, but we have at least we got Australia covered, we got South America covered, we have one in Europe, um, but it's it's a super awesome group of people. And just, we use Zoom, by the way. So some of you who are on YouTube or on Zoom, you're probably wondering what the, the hell the Zoom is. Um, it's a really high performance video conferencing tool. Sometimes we'll have up to 25 people in this room. So, uh, you know, you, this is coming back to, again, you know, you guys need to come together, meet face to face. If you can't do face to face, at least do video chat. And <coughs> we meet up every Mondays and Wednesdays. And this is just, no, no one's looking at you, by the way. This is just a recording to kind of give people an idea. Uh, of the stuff that we do. So we started about a year ago, um, April 1st, 2013. We were nothing. We, we had no followers, no subscribers or anything. Um, and it took us about a year, almost nine months, to get Reading is Magic, Ray and Clovis, and our first, basically our first season uh, of animation done. Um, it took us almost about a year. We released everything in January of this year. Uh, reading is magic, plus a bunch of shorts, uh, a kid's book for coloring, some posters, even paper toys and stuff. And it was like our first like first season of Rain Clovis. Um, it took us nine months to do. And from that period, from nine months up until now, um, we've grown in followers. People have bought DVDs, which is awesome. You, like, I, I love it that somebody out there thinks it's it's good enough. Like, and not just my mom, by the way. There's seriously, we've had <laughs> a good amount of people like they really like really enjoy the show, or you know, their kids really liked it, so they wanted to buy it. So, um, this slide isn't so much about working remotely as much as it is like to if anybody in this audience or watching online wants to make something or or create their own following or everything. Uh, it's taken us about a year to get to this. Well, actually, more more like a year and a half now. It's taken us about a year and a half to get to this point, but it's totally doable. Um, and I just wanted to share some statistics of, of, of us, you know, how, how, it's, how we've gotten here. Uh, and just the other day, we released all that jazz. Uh, I'm not going to screen it because showing video over Zoom doesn't really work too well, but I will, I will show a link. And I think you guys will love it. It's, it's online. It's a short 90-second cartoon about Ray and Clovis. Um, in fact, why don't we talk a little bit about it? Uh, last year, when we were working on Rain Clovis, uh, I, I also have to admit we had no idea like how to use Blender. We were all Maya artists. Um, we were Maya artists. We were new people. We were After Effects people. No clue. Um, you know, being a startup, being a small little company, um, we couldn't really afford a bunch of Maya licenses and everything, especially if we were going to be selling this. So we went to Blender and had no idea what we were doing, and we came up with this. 
Um, not bad, you know, decent cycles, decent shading and everything. We went back and forth with it, though. We're just try, you know, just trying to wrap our heads around it. Um, if anybody in here, I heard some, there were some Maya people in here. Um, we do make tutorials. I, I will post the link right towards the end of this. Uh, just very, very simple ones, not like full-on CG cookie or digital tutorial ones. Uh, but a very simple transition. If you're a Maya person, this is how you use Blender. And we made like a whole cheat sheet and everything of like, this is, you know, key in Maya is S, but in Maya and in, in Blender it's I and, you know, little things like that. Um, because again, transitioning is really hard. The shortcuts are different and all the buttons are, you know, they're all over the place. So we made some videos and uh, tutorials and I'll, I'll put that link up here towards the end. But going back to it, this is where we were at about a year ago. Just basic stuff. It looks really good. It kind of works. Um, we even like experimented with reflective stuff and, and had a superhero cat. We call him tinfoil cat. Uh, and now here's where we're at right now. Um, we took a hard look at what we were doing. We decided to add some specularity. We wanted to add some better shading to it, better lighting. Uh, we like quadrupled our render times, which blew our mind. Um, and then, of course, we kept our outlines because we feel like that's a, you know, it feels like an old cartoon in a way, having those black outlines. So, and also we do stuff like this now. Yeah, we could never do that. Um, I think the hardest thing about the old rigs is couldn't even make them walk. So if you watch any of the old episodes, you'll notice that they walk like maybe once. Uh, and that's because that's all we could afford to do because it's too, too difficult. But now we can make these dudes like squash and stretch and, and feel like a kitty. And this is all thanks to Juan Pablo. He's, he's an awesome rigging artist for Blender, and he's been able to make these incredible, incredible characters for us to, to play with. Um, this is where you can watch the show, if anyone's interested. It's Rain Clovis. It's theoryanimation.com. Uh, and if you want, you go, to, go a little farther, watch slash RNC. It's a really cool cartoon. Um, it is geared towards kids in a way. Uh, but not like like young kids. It's more like kids who are like 10 to 14 years old and, and anybody who's a kid at heart. Uh, it's, it's inspired by Rocco's Modern Life and Red and Stimpy. So if you're a fan of that kind of stuff, you'll really enjoy our cartoons. Um, a little bit of st statistics, because I know we're a kind of a tech audience and we all like seeing this kind of stuff. Um, this is All That Jazz, the 90-second cartoon that we had just released last week. And it took, uh, took a lot of work, uh, admittedly. Um, at this point, we had 26 artists volunteering their time. We were over three continents, and we generated a ton of images. And one of the hardest things about doing remote animation and, and working remotely and, and collaborating remotely is data and transfers, and, and there's no easy solution to it. Um, we use Subversion. We have our own wrapper for Subversion that works really, really well for asset files. And I can talk to you guys afterwards, or I can put up my email if you guys want to talk a little bit more about it. Um, but actual like render images and everything, we still have to dump that to uh, a web server and just transfer all of that down. We've started experimenting with a tool called BitTorrent Sync, and that really works to to manage like the frames, if you will, like all the comps and everything that have like one place and it's peer to peer sharing of all the frames. So that's that's working. Um, the downside is that it has no revisions to it. So if one person decide on their machine, if one person decides to delete those frames, it's going to wipe everybody else's machine. Um, so I have to run a daily backup to make sure that no one wipes our frames. But it, it's still a problem, but believe it or not, you know, a lot of hard work able to get through it and, and still still make a, uh, a show happen. And just a 90 second cartoon generated 65 gigs of data. So if anybody out there is interested in doing this kind of stuff, um, just giving you a heads up that it's a lot of work and it's a lot of data. It can be done, but just be aware of that. You, you will have to have a, a nice hard drive. Um, so Sterling, I'm just going to run through these last little bits real quick. OK, yeah. I mean, um, so I have no idea if we're going to get kicked out of here at the top of the hour or or yeah. not. So yeah, if we could just leave maybe a little bit of time. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you short. No, 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 it's OK. Um, I'm going to point out two, two other people that were at our talk, because uh, okay. I feel like they deserve a little bit of time. Um, the Real quick, if anyone wants to know the tools and how we did it, the website is maketheory.com. Uh, and then finally, two other people presented with us, uh, Roberto Ortiz of CG Society. And they're, they're running their own club, kind of like a mastermind group 
to work on intellectual property, their own stuff. It's kind of like a creative group that meets up once a week online. Super cool. Definitely check them out. CG Society used to be called CG Talk. Good afternoon. May I have your attention, please? I'm going to wait because that sounded really important. Like, I hope the building isn't going to burn down or something. And then for the people who are watching on YouTube and everybody else, uh, just really quick, this is Sync Sketch, and this is a tool to do interactive real-time annotating and critiques on images and video. Definitely check them out. We use them heavily, Sync Sketch, just how it sounds. It's free for right now to experiment with. Um, super, super awesome tool. So with Sterling, with that, do you need me to repeat anything, or should I just... Are you, are you guys all right over there? Or what's going on? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry about that. We had somebody come over to the loudspeaker and talk about some guitar concert that's happening here. So uh, I thought there was like going to be an earthquake. Like, it's <laughs> well, it is. Is down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. This is just the last bit for everybody who missed it. Um, Sync Sketch is just a tool to do real time annotation on video and images. Uh, if anyone has used Tweak RV, it's very similar, um, but it works all over the web, and you don't need a plug-in. And we love it at Theory. We we use this like every day for for dailies and everything. And anybody watching online, please check it out. They're an awesome group of people. Uh, and and with that, I'm done. If anyone wants to email me, it's info at theoryanimation.com. And uh, Sterling, it's all yours, man. <laughs>